George Donnelly writes at Arm Your Mind for Liberty, AYMFL.com, seven urgent lessons from Adam Kokish's Philadelphia arrest. Now, he blows a lot of smoke up my ass in this story, and uh, I don't mind repeating it because it's really good smoke. But the uh, subject matter is still one that I'm kind of coming to grips with. Because I've been arrested a, probably a couple dozen times by now. And every one of them is not anything that I'm ashamed of. And I've never been convicted of anything. So that this one is special really says something. Because all of my previous arrests have been pretty easily explained. Pretty obvious. Oh, you were doing something in front of the White House, or oh, you were pr you you stayed in in the Capitol after they asked you to leave, or you waved a sign where you weren't supposed to, or you know, like really obvious stuff. And it's a sight and release, or like the you know Jefferson dance party. We we put up really the the smallest of legal resistance, and they ended up dropping the charges, which was just a hundred dollar citation. But there's kind of a before and after you get set up by the feds and arrested for giving a speech and charged with a felony. You know, I mean, like, there's just... And, and I'm still figuring out all of the implications for that for this, but here's George with, with his seven urgent lessons. Adam Kokesh is a libertarian activist with wide-ranging interests. He's run for Congress. He has interrupted a Republican Party convention. He, has, he had his own U.S. cable TV show on a Russian government network. He has 50,000 Facebook fans. <gasps> now it... Actually, today we are crossing 5555. Five, five, five. That's right. We are, yeah, anyways. He runs a popular independent online podcast and video show called Adam vs. the Man. I've written about him before, and I'm sure I will be writing about him again in the future. If I'm still doing this job and I'm still getting the love and support from the audience that I am, absolutely. On Saturday, May 18 of this year, Adam was arrested by U.S. Park Police in Center City, Philadelphia, while speaking to a permitted rally. And that's just another little irony of this. I've because I've done a lot of unpermitted events. When I got arrested last weekend for smoking pot in front of the White House two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, they could have arrested me for an unlawful assembly. They could have gone, you know, and and, and pulled some bullshit like that if they wanted to. Although it would have been a fun, a much more fun legal case if that was the thing. But in Philly, they they got a permit for this rally. He was only speaking to the crowd. There is no sign that he was even engaging in civil disobedience. And yet he was carted away by local and federal goons and was charged with a fabricated felony that carries an eight-year maximum prison sentence. This is when my agorist venture Shield Mutual, the Agora's first defense agency, went into action for Adam. But that's not what I want to talk about. You can read our after-action report if you're interested in seeing what we did for Adam. And by the way, I will definitely take this as an opportunity to plug shieldmutual.com. It is an incredible protection agency. And if if George Donnelly uh, ends up growing this thing as uh, as he should, it, just in its current venture, in its current form, and, and it's it's expanding right now, and they're, they're growing out different models. And uh, when we get the live show back, we're definitely going to be interviewing him. But, I mean, when he de describes it as a, a defense agency, <laughs> this could be the thing that really grows into, you know, a large private defense corporation that provides you with actual legitimate defense services. And it starts with defending you from the police state. I want to talk about the many lessons that have to be learned from Adam's arrest and the sub subsequent six-day standoff in Philadelphia. One, the federal government has unlimited mugging ability. They can mug anyone anytime they like for anything they like and lie about it however they like. It happened to me too. Yes, he's, and it's happened to lots of people. And they can get away with it if we are not united in support of each other in a big way. Which gets to the next lesson. Actually, it gets to the third one. But number two is, you must be unabashedly radical. There is no sense in being a halfway libertarian. If you are going to be an activist, then you have to take your game to the wall without fear. The type of people who work in the government's injustice system know fear when they see it, and it only emboldens them. Adam is radical, ostensibly fearless, and constantly taking his activism to new heights. And I think he's absolutely right here. If you are going to be a libertarian, and you are going to live by the values that go along with that, yeah, you gotta go all the way. Because if you're gonna be just 
a wallflower, a good little wage slave, and then say, but I believe in libertarianism. If you live your life at all differently, and you're not truly standing up, you're not making it clear that you know how to talk to police, that you know how to fight the court system, that you're willing to stand up to the federal government, you're willing to stand up to Obama yourself personally, you're more vulnerable, really. They will take that as a sign of weakness, and they will exploit it, if they feel like it. Three, and this is the lesson that I've been promoting as, as, as the single uh, biggest lesson that, that goes for everyone, not just for activists and, and in, this, in the terms that George puts it here. But he says, number three, build a platform and a following. You must become marketing and public relations savvy. A half-assed blog like this one is useless. It's either all or nothing. And I, here, maybe it's not all or nothing. But the more known you are, the more visible you are, the safer you are. The more people who notice that you disappeared if you get arrested, the safer you are. If it's simply just posting to Facebook every day, living with other people, whatever it is, don't be a loner and don't be in a situation where if you disappear, no one will notice you. And if you can invest any significant effort into making sure that if you are disappeared, lots of people will notice, you're going to be that much safer for it. If you are going to be an activist, if you are going to speak out, disobey, videotape, and engage in other activism, you need to be well known so that when the thugs come down on you, there will be a block of people who instantly know who you are, what you're about, and who care about you. This is the most important lesson. Shield Mutual's next service evolution will help our customers with precisely this. And I look forward to all the ways that Shield Mutual is going to be growing. But... He is absolutely right here. And one of the things that we want to provide uh, with Adam versus the man is an access to this platform. One of the ways you can, you can join in the conversation, simply be more visible in this sense, is to join the conversation at forums.adamversustheman.com. Go and introduce yourself. This was, uh, I think, somewhat helpful with Joshua Hacken when, uh, when he had to get his, child, his children back and, and, and fled to Cuba, that there were people who knew him from the forums certainly did not hurt his case. But also through our affiliate program, if you want to produce content and share it with a wider audience, please send it in. We'd be more than happy to share it on our YouTube channel and get word out for you about what you're doing. Number four, prepare yourself for prison. Oh, and by the way, Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y at adamversustheman.com for the affiliate program. Number four, prepare yourself for prison. Every activist today is a dissident and dissidents always risk jail sooner or later. When your moment comes, you need to be ready for it. Read about prison. Read what it's like. Imagine yourself in that situation. Prepare for your family to continue daily life as usual when you are incommunicado in prison. Have procedures and scenarios in place with trusted friends and family. Make sure a conscious, courageous fellow activist is prepared to lead your public relations defense like Shield Mutual. Prepare yourself mentally with a spiritual program such as religion, meditation, or other great minds. Thoreau, Gandhi, Goldman, etc. And now, this is where the sort of legwork comes in. And yeah, I, I kind of fell down on this one, as my team can attest. While it was great to have people that were ready to react, there wasn't much in the way of specific plans or protocols for should Adam disappear for a few days. Five, in the public relations arena, we have the advantage when it comes to court cases. While I was raising holy hell for Adam as he was incommunicado in solitary confinement, the cops, judge, prosecutor, and other bureaucrats were effectively gagged. They can't speak out on pending legal matters like you and I can. I issued press releases that presented the narrative of Adam's arrest from a point of view that benefited him. The state goons were powerless to reply. They have the advantage on the field of arms. We have the advantage on the field of truth. We must exploit this advantage to the max. Absolutely. Six, money is a critical component of our struggle. When we raise more than $6,000 for Adam's Legal Defense Fund in under 11 hours, I feel certain that federal officials were watching. <laughs> yeah, they get paid to. I feel certain that it impacted their decision-making process. Well, <laughs> I'm, I, I think that's likely too, but they really don't get paid enough to think in those situations. In the liberty community, money is a sore topic at times because people are hyper-paranoid about being ripped off or they think it's immoral or gauche to involve money in a political cause. But everything requires money, and money is power, whether that jives with your sensibilities and ideology or not. It's a fact. Generous funding makes the difference between hippies that can be abused at will and an organized political movement that leaves no option but to be taken seriously. And George, I couldn't have said it better myself. Brilliant point. But I will add that there is something about activists and activism that uh, attracts a certain ideology, a certain relationship with money, a certain, a certain idealism. And I saw this more, more prominently when I was active in the anti-war movement than really in the, in the broader liberty movement uh, with liberals who often have a 
you know, philosophically distorted sense of what money is. And if you haven't read Atlas Shrugged, again, here's a here's another reason to plug it. There is a, a description of the the agora, the market that is created in Galt's Gulch, that that really shows the nobility and virtue of money as a medium of exchange and, and what it represents. And I think we all owe it to ourselves to be true to the philosophy as libertarians to, to, to have a healthy relationship with money, at least psychologically, and, and to not have these kind of hang-ups about, oh, well, if I'm going to get, if I'm going to donate there or here or whatever. And, and, I, and I do think you can, you can make donations and support people um, in a way that doesn't contradict the libertarian philosophy of, of, of selfishness, if you will, because, you know, I've, I've gone through this debate a number of times, and even with the guys in the room right now, there is no such thing as selflessness, really. You can do a selfless act. You can perform something that is for the good of others. But if you are doing it because you want to see other people succeed, you're only doing it for yourself. It is still ultimately selfish. If I go feed 100 orphans, it's selfless in that it's, yeah, you can look at it from the external perspective. Yes, he's helping people other than himself. But why am I doing it? Because I want to see orphans do well. I don't want to see anybody starve. It's to satisfy my own desires. And I think we need to really embrace that and be upfront about that as, as just as human beings as we move through the world to be true to our own will as human beings to respect that. And you can use the word selfless and selfish, but ultimately it is, it is a, a, a factual philosophical observation of the human condition that you are not capable, at least by this definition, of doing something that is truly selfless because you're only doing it based on your choice. Either you believe in free will or you don't. Number seven. Your active participation is required when we support each other with something as simple as a phone call and $20. We are powerful. And I want to point out, when you donate $20 to my legal defense fund, as so many people did, for which I am so grateful, and as people continue to do every day at adamversetheman.com slash invest to contribute to make this show possible, it's because I hope you are getting something out of it. Don't donate because it's hurting you. Don't donate because it's not in your best interest. I wouldn't tell you to do something contrary to the philosophy, but if you see value in Adam versus the man being funded, if you see value in your own protection that I do what I do and I'm able to fight the police state as I'm able to and that I'm able to take these court cases to their conclusions as I, as I hope to now with a few pending cases in front of me, then you are doing it because it is in your self-interest. And I hope that you can appreciate that. And I hope that when people donate to support Adam versus the man, that they're doing it from that truly libertarian perspective and with that state of mind. Without the well-attended call flood and the generous legal fund donations, Adam might have rotted in that icy prison indefinitely. Well, I would have at least done 100 days before this thing had, would have to have gone to trial. But yes, the call flood was huge. And, and I'm so glad and grateful that, that, that people were able to do that. But then I was pretty prepared for prison. That was one thing I, I had, uh, at least in, in, in terms of my own state of mind. If I had to do 100 days of solitary, that's what I was essentially volunteering for by declining the terms that they set for my conditions of bail. And it worked. So, um, but, but it worked because of all that external pressure. The brave people who made noise constantly in front of the prison and the federal courthouse also played a large role here. They were a spectacle, and I guarantee you that they slowed down the machinery of injustice while they were there, and that really sticks in the decision makers' craws. Not only that, but I felt so much safer in prison knowing that every single one of the guards knew who I was. They knew who the political prisoners in that, in that cell were. My counselor, before I heard about it from an inmate, actually, no, I heard about it from an inmate first. When we went to court on, on, uh, on Tuesday or, or um, no, Monday, when we went to court on Monday, there was a, a prisoner in the, uh, you know, pre-court holding tank with me and, and Poe who uh, said, oh, you're the ones that all the noise was for. And then when I went and I just was going through the regular prison processing and spoke to a counselor, he was, he was, he was complaining about people uh, harassing the guards on their way in and out. But they knew that if they were the guard that fucked with me, it was going to be that much worse for them on the outside. And I think it really protected me. Adam played a high stakes game and won. And it's true. I mean, I want to stare down with the federal government. And I couldn't have done it without everybody behind me and without all of these principles that George Donnelly lays out here. He showed the court his internal fortitude by refusing pre-trial re pre release. This surprised the magistrate judge so much that he claimed that Adam was his own jailer. 
Adam was fortunate that he already had a huge following of people who stuck with him. The phone calls, the press releases, the fundraising, it all showed that Adam was strong, not just on the inside, but also on the outside of that prison. And there's one other thing that George doesn't mention in the story that I think was, was significant, and that is just maintaining a cheery attitude, really, in prison. I smiled for all of my mug shots. I said good day to all of the guards. When they, did, when they asked me a question I didn't want to answer, I just... Either said I declined to answer that with a big smile on my face, or I just smiled at them awkwardly and stared. I hope you're enjoying your day, sir. You know? And I think they were all being driven to suicide by saying, holy shit, the guy on the inside is having a great time and smiling. He's in a great mood. And I was. And they're all fat and miserable. And not all of them are fat. They're, they're all just, you know, regular good people, I'm sure. But... By comparison, you know, to the inmates who are relatively fit and take care of themselves and get to exercise every day and have all the sex they want. Um, yeah, the, the guards were pretty, uh, pretty miserable by comparison. Grumpy, really, even. Adam got federal felony charges dismissed. That is no small feat. We need to study this incident, draw lessons from it, and apply them in our own lives so that we're ready when our time comes. Bonus lesson, don't release video that could be used as evidence against you or an ally in a pending legal case, especially a criminal one. While I'm certain that Adam's release of the below video helped his public relations, it may very well be used against N.A. Poe, a fellow activist who was arrested with him. Poe's felony charges are still pending, and he needs $10,000 to hire a lawyer, but has only raised $3,200 so far. Please donate here what you can to his legal defense fund. The link will be in the description, so please check that out. But I, I'm, I'm in a, this a little disagreement here with George, just ever so slightly. And I understand, you know, releasing footage or not, that there are some considerations there. But... If you're comfortable with that evidence getting out, if anything, I mean, I'm, I'm a major proponent, uh, not just in general, but for my own life and in my own practices of, of openness and transparency. And so I'm, um, you know, I, I was a little disappointed that my team at least didn't like immediately, oh, here's the footage of the arrest. Let's get this out and have that be the video that went viral because it was a lot of other people's videos because we weren't the only ones taping there. And if that's the case, as, as should usually be in these instances, uh, you know, you're, you're better off to get the footage out. But there's, there's another big reason when you're, why you're better off to get the footage out is because if you get it on YouTube, it's, it's on the permanent record. It's in the Internet Archive. It can't go away. The government can't seize it. They can't put a seal on it. They can't steal it. They, they, whatever that the they would do to suppress that information. And if, if you're really guilty of something and you're afraid that the video evidence might incriminate you, sure, yeah. Exercise caution, hold it, whatever. Uh, and get it to a lawyer. If that's the case, get the footage to a lawyer. Don't release it publicly. But I, I really think uh, that's the exception of the rule. And in, in 90 plus percent of cases that you would be involved in as an activist, uh, George is wrong on this one minor point, And that is get the footage out, get the transparency, get the accountability. Um, because it's also going to be the case that in most of the, the, these arrests, it's the officers that are in the wrong. And they're going to try to suppress that footage. So I'm glad that we got it out. I'm glad that people are doing this and, and looking at the lessons. And I'm really grateful that George Donnelly is a, a part of the struggle. I am grateful that he exists on this planet at the same time that I do. And to be working with him is a real honor. His websites are Arm Your Mind for Liberty. That's AYMFL.com and ShieldMutual.com. You owe it to yourself to purchase some protection services. Dude, this is like, this is really creepy. You're not like doing much for your credibility, just not answering the questions. I was assaulted by an undercover FBI agent and officers of the Metropolitan Police Department. And we've had a lot of police checkpoints here recently. 